Who used to smack you for? Being a naughty boy. I wasn't a, I wasn't a bad boy, I was a naughty boy. I was a, I was a, uh, a naughty boy, not a bad boy, a naughty boy, knocking on, you know, making stink bombs and things like that, you see. How do you make a stink bomb? It was acid and um, zinc. Melt it, you see, and put it in a test tube and seal the test tube, the glass, you see, on, with a Bunsen burner but so big, and then we used to go into prayers, you see, in the morning and just drop them, you see. Mm -hmm. Of course, people wouldn't see and step on them, and out come the smell, you see. Then the headmaster would come and smell, of course. And he knew who it was, you see. He used to say, stay behind, Turner. <laughs> and then we knew what was coming, you see. Three of the best, you see, and we used to, we used to know. Oh, dear. Never mind. Well, you went into chemistry, you see, and you, you read, you got the books out and read about it, you see. And of course, you you, um, you fiddle about with things, you see, because you should be doing other things. Well, we didn't, you see. We just fiddle about making these stink bombs, which we were very interested. Well, where, when your grandfather had the shop, when you were first in it, can you remember where they bought the fish from? It was mainly Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did it get here? It came by rail to Oxnorm, and then a Mr. Newby, he used to bring it up in his um, van. He used to charge um, sixpence for a five-stone box and threepence for a one-stone box. And right to the door, he used to bring it up. And then uh, when I started, it came by Charles Alexander. Road transport, you see, and they brought it right to the door and put it in the shop, of course, and opened the shop up and put it in. and. And that was it. That was still from Aberdeen? Aberdeen and Fleetwood and Grimsby because it's best to have more at one port in case one was on strike. So if anybody was on strike or couldn't get here, you always had fish. And all the bad weather in winter, Aberdeen was never, never late. Always here when I got there at six o'clock in the morning. So all the way from Aberdeen, never late. And. Grimsby was the worst, they were always like coming over the tops. <laughs> well, it was it was true, they were they were late. Because it had to come to um Lancaster and transferred from Lancaster into um the local carrier. He used to go around well, Overson, Barra, Maryport, Whitehaven, Keswick and come back and I was the last one, you see, because it was late. Well not late, but seven, eight o'clock. We see people coming in at seven o'clock in the morning and wanting the fish. People were going to work at IBs and things like that, you see. And Fleetwood got got to my shop about up up past five, six six o'clock in the morning. So it was all right. It was always there. You see, they just opened the shop and put it in and locked the door and away they went. And then finished. Was the fish carried packed and ice? Yes, in, mainly in one stone boxes. It used to come in five stone boxes, in wooden boxes, which were returnable. At, uh, it would charge five shillings, or 25 pence, per box. And when you sent them back, you got refunded for them, of course. You got it knocked off your bill. But then they found out it was only economical to send them back. And it was cheaper to put them in cardboard boxes and throw them away. See, what was uh, one stone boxes. And uh, it was much lighter, of course. And we just threw them away. Because you had a problem to keep them clean, the boxes, and yeah. keep them out of the dust and dirt, of course, and, um, and the flies. So it was much, much easier to put them in cardboard, which we squashed and put them in plastic bags, and the council took them away mm. three times a week. So that was much, much easier. Where did your, uh, your shop get all the poultry and game? And the local farmers used to come round. They used to bring them up, up, to the, up to the yard, what we used to call the warehouse. That's where all the poultry was kept, and the uh, cages. And My uncle George was in charge of that. He did nothing else but pluck and dress the chickens. And he used to buy them, you see. If they were good, he kept If they weren't, they were sent back, of course. And the farmers used to come in twice, three times a week with so many. and they, Pheasants we got from the local squires, and we also sold venison. They came from the local squires, but um, many of the chickens were brought in every day with the farmers. Did you buy them live or dead? Oh no, always live. Mm -hmm. Because my uncle George, he was oh, a marvelous man at plucking. 
He could do about 14, 15 an hour, pluck and dress them. Marvellous. And in, in, um, in uh, Christmas week, us with all the turkeys, and mm -hmm. the room was about as big as our dining room here. And it, we had cages down one side, and all the turkeys were there. And he said, get them out of the cages and, you know, pull them or in the necks. And uh, he had to be very careful when he did, because if you put them on your breasts, they would skin. You know, the skin would come off because it was so tender. Mm. So you had to be very, very careful. Always do, always do the breasts last. Then he didn't handle them too much. But um, you mean if you plucked the breasts too soon after they were killed? Yes, it would tear. It would tear. So you had to be very, very careful. And it got tougher as the bird got cold. Yes, but well, that's why you had to get them off so quickly. Yeah. But with peasants, of course, they were cold. Mm. And they used to hang them for all weeks. And until they were high, walking with maggots, I've seen them. Were they very hard to pluck then? No. Oh, no, no, no. You get used to it. Because, mm. as I say, my uncle could do about 14, 15 an hour. So that's going. Mm. And with the turkeys, um, they don't do it now. We used to pull the sinews out of, out of the legs, the sinews, as you know. Mm. And we had a big beam oak beam in the back and a big six inch nail and it's right groove where they kept putting the turkey legs and pulling them you know to get the sinews out it's you've got to had to see it to believe it that many was put in there even the chickens would pull the sinews out but they don't now they just chop the feet off